morning, great morning, and thank you, Tanya, and thank you to our media team who are doing a fantastic, fantastic work in serving. Thank you. And to our readers, thank you so much. And to each and every one who has joined us this morning, thank you so much for your presence and for your participation in our service. So our lesson this morning is entitled, The Touch of Spirit. The Touch of Spirit. I want to just reread our scripture for today. It's a scripture that I'm sure that you'll want to look at as you uh, leave the service today. It's 2 Corinthians 3, 17 through 18 that Beverly so beautifully shared with us this morning. And the scripture reads, the Lord is the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us with unveiled, meaning uncovered faces, are being transformed into the same image from one degree to another. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us are being unveiled, with unveiled faces are being transformed into the same image from one degree or another. Well, I want to talk with you again about another scripture. And you may want to write this down. It be, it's spoken to in Matthew 5 and 28. Some of us know this particular story. It's the story of the woman with the issue of blood. And the scripture tells us that this woman was suffering from what was called an incurable illness. And according to the book of Luke, because the story is told in Luke and Mark, so according to the book of Luke, this unsolved issue was occurring in her life for 12 years years. Going back to the book of Mark, the story says that she used all of her money consulting physicians because of this health issue. And people in her community had deemed her unclean because of this issue she was having. So at this point in her life, physically, her health was deteriorating. Financially, her money was exhausted. Spiritually, she was forbidden to enter the temple to worship with others because of this medical challenge. So you see, she was socially and religiously isolated and shunned. However, in the mind of this woman, she could be healed. In her mind, she believed, and in her heart, she felt that yes, in spite of what everyone else was saying and how they were treating her, that she could be healed. She believed that as Jesus came to town, if she could just press through the crowd of people as Jesus passed by, if she could just touch the hem of his garment, if she could just reach far enough through the crowd and be touched by his aura, by his spirit, she could be healed. She believed that with all of her heart and all of her mind. This idea, this belief dominated her mind. It was the thought that she constantly gave attention to. It was pulsating throughout her life, this idea. I just want to be touched by his spirit. So the story goes. As Jesus passed through town, she pressed her way through the crowd, reached out 
and touched the hem of his God, touched the aura, the spirit that surrounded him. And the story says that she was healed. At that point, it goes on to say that Jesus asked, who touched me? He felt it. He, have you ever been in, in a room with your eyes closed or anywhere with your eyes closed and you can feel someone moving or coming closer to you, standing there next to you and you open your eyes and there is someone. You can feel that presence. You can feel that energy that was not there when you originally closed your eyes. You can feel it. Jesus asked, who touched me? And when she revealed herself and explained why she did that, he said to her, daughter, it's your faith that has healed you. So go in peace and be freed from your suffering. It's your faith that has healed you. So go in peace and be free from suffering. Remember, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. She was touched by the spirit of the Christ presence in Jesus. The same presence that lives within you and within me and touches our soul. You see, this touch of spirit is a healing touch. And sometimes it's the resolution of something in our life that seemed like a major issue. It could be health, it could be finances, it could be relational. It, it seemed like a major issue and it was resolved. That's the touch of spirit answered prayer is the touch of spirit. Recognition of the presence and the power of God within us, as well as everywhere present and allowing that presence to express as us is a major touch of spirit. When we reach the point in our life when, when we recognize the power of God within us and around us and about us and everywhere present, that's a major awakening and awareness, that touch of spirit. It touches and awakens. It awakens a person to a new level of awareness. It's a touch that has to be felt and recognized. That it's not me, but thee. God. Let me share with you a poem, the first and second uh, passages of this poem that was written by a woman by the name of Joanne Nylander. And she says, Lord, as I begin this day, have it your way. I seek not me, but thee. Lord, may those I meet upon your way, see not me, but thee. Powerful, it's not me, but thee, oh God. The awareness of this touch of spirit unfolds in the heart and the mind and then it shows up in our experiences. We tend to walk differently, express differently, see differently, and through transformation, we are different. Spiritual growth and spiritual healing by the touch of spirit. And you know, my friends, this is happening to us on a daily basis, but very often we, we just don't recognize it. We just take it for granted that these things are happening in our life. If you can remember a TV series some years ago that was called Touched by an Angel. The key actress in that television series <clears throat> was Della Reese. And Della Reese was a jazz and gospel singer, an actress, a producer, and an ordained New Thought minister. So Reverend Della once told the story of slipping and falling through a glass door in her home. And that experience severed 
an artery in her body. But her life was saved and she healed. She was touched by the spirit of God. She was at that time and then and became more in depth in studying Christian metaphysics. And during her studies, nine years later, after falling through this glass door and severing an artery in her body, nine years later, she experienced an aneurysm in the middle of an interview. At that point, she applied the metaphysics that she had learned. Once again, she was healed, touched by spirit. And ultimately, she became an ordained minister and began a ministry in California teaching others through this very teaching that we learn and apply, helping others to actualize this teaching in their lives. Touched by spirit. As I was working on this lesson over the last few days, the thought came to me concerning the amount of time and effort and energy that we as humans put into attaining and getting. And when one really doubles down and thinks about it, as I was thinking about it, do we of our human selves really get anything in our attaining? Do we really get anything in our attaining? Do we really add to our life in our attaining. Hmm. Can we add health to our life? Can we add money to our life? Can we add healthy relationships to our life or anything else to our life? Well, the thought came to me that I don't think so. We do not get or add these things. The thought came that what we do is recognize and accept that we already embody all that God is. And then we allow that belief, the essence of spirit, to flow out from us. That we must recognize and accept that we already embody all that God is. And then allow that belief and the essence of spirit to flow out from us. And then that bread, the essence of spirit that flows out from us, that bread, that flow of spirit is cast upon the water. Cast upon the vital energy of life and returns to bless and touch our life in a way that only, only spirit can. It's not magical, it's principle. God is, spirit is. God is good and only good. God's nature is love and wisdom. God is all providing. God not only creates through us, but God sustains its creations in wholeness. God not only creates through us as us, but sustains its creations in wholeness, not in pieces, in wholeness. God is the allness of all that is. And spirit is the activity, the motion, the movement of God. The truth is, my friends, that no one can ever separate from the touch of spirit. 
No one can ever separate, hear this, no one can ever be separated from healing. No one can ever be separated from wellness. That's something to think about, don't you think? No one can be separated or is separate from healing. No one is separate from wellness. And why is that? Because the thing that causes the illness is the thing that causes wholeness. The thing that causes prosperity is the thing that causes poverty as well. The thing that causes an attracting personality is the same thing that causes one to demonstrate a toxic and repelling personality. The thing that causes dissatisfaction is the same thing that causes satisfaction. The thing that causes one experience, my friends, is the thing that can cause a different experience. And that thing are the thoughts that are running through our mind, the thinking patterns of the mind over a period of time. We heard the song, Our Thoughts Are Prayers. Our Thoughts Are Prayers. We heard the song, I am the thinker. You are the thinker who thinks the thought that changes the things that shape our life. We are the thinkers who think the thought that change the things, that has the power to change the things that shape our life. The same mind, the same mind that causes one experience can be shifted to create a new and better experience. Let me share with you an experience that I had uh, a little while back. <clears throat> I had gone to the supermarket, pick up just a few items. And my tendency these days is to get in and get out, double masked, in and out. No lingering, no conversations, no standing and reading labels. You know what you want, get in and get out. And so as I was leaving the supermarket on this particular day and I was in the parking lot, I had put some items, one item, a sponge in the seat of the cart, the seat of the cart where you would sit a child. I put the Sponge there. And then I set my handbag in that seat and, and wrapped the cord around it. So my handbag was actually sitting on top of the sponge. So when I left the store and paid for the item, and I was putting the two bags into the car and picked up my handbag, I realized that the sponge was sitting there in the seat. And I had not purchased the sponge. I had not bought the sponge. I had not paid for the sponge. So the sponge really wasn't mine. So what I did was after loading up the car with everything, I left the sponge in the seat of the shopping cart and I pushed the cart to the side because I saw the person across the lot who was collecting the carts and I knew that he would come and get the cart and he would put it back. Well, the woman in the car next to me got out of her car and she said, I'll take that cart. So she didn't have to walk into the store and pick up another one. So I said, fine. And she said, is this yours holding up the sponge? And I said to her, no, it's not mine. I had intended to purchase it, but I realized after checking out that I didn't pay for it. And so I'm leaving it here so that it can go back inside and on the shelf. Well, she dropped the sponge she became very anxious and panicky and her behavior totally changed. Hysterical in the parking lot of the supermarket. Hysterical because she believed that if she took this particular cart 
and went back into the store with an item that was not paid for, she was going to be accused of stealing. She did not stand there and think that if that was her thought, all she had to do was take another cart. Or all she had to do was to tell the cart person who was collecting parts what I had shared with her. But what she chose to do, the thoughts that were running through her mind were so hysterical and so dramatic in the parking lot. And I can only imagine what was going on within her body from what I was seeing on the outside. And the thoughts in her mind that created that drama and created that hysteria, it's the same mind that could have created peace. But she chose drama and hysteria. The same mind that causes one experience to happen can cause another experience to happen. But when we calm ourselves and allow ourselves to be touched by the energy of God, the, the energy of spirit, the power of spirit, we're poised, we're calm, and we make good and right choices. So like the woman in Mark, with the issue of blood. Whatever we steadily fixate our mind and our heart to for a period of time, and then press forth eventually manifest in our life. The Daily Word today read that imagination is a potent and powerful tool. We can image anything we desire in our mind. And if we fixate the mind on that, positive or negative can be the image. If we fixate the mind on that and then go into action about it, it becomes manifest in our life like the woman with the issue of love. She didn't let go of that thought. Didn't matter to her what everybody else was saying around town. It didn't matter. They wouldn't let her in the temple to worship him or man. But she pressed on. She continued to press on. And then Jesus blessed her. Jesus, even the disciples were telling her to get away. If you read the story. But she pressed on with determination. Because in her mind, she had held on to this particular thought and belief. And in her heart, she felt the reality of it over a period of time. And so that, that idea just consumed her soul. So it had to happen because her soul was so consumed with that belief. The same principle works, my friend, for you and for me. The same healing principle that worked for Reverend Della Reese works for you and for me. When we take the teaching, when we take the principle and hold on to it, become fixated with it and allow it to consume our mind and heart, then we must live it out. It does not matter how abundant or seemingly lacking the economic situation may be in our individual lives or in our nation. It does not matter. It does not matter what others may say. It does not matter what we presently have or believe we don't have when we are touched by spirit. It's an experience of peace, resolution, and hope. And we use the tool of 
prayer, meditation, affirmation, and study to come closer to God, to know the God within us, to know the response of God with us, to recognize when spirit is speaking to us, either audibly or through images, to recognize the still small voice and work with it. You see, our journey in this healing process is to feel and to know and then to live in harmony with what already is, has always been, and will always be spirit, God, our journey is to See, feel, know, and then live in harmony and in peace with what already is, with what always was, and with what always will be spirit. So that we can recognize the touch of spirit on our life as we move through the daily process and know that we are blessed by it. You see, when we recognize it, we can smile. And so what's happening around us, to us, through it, doesn't matter as much because we that touch of spirit reminds us that God is always so no matter what issue you may be experiencing in life right now, calm yourself first. Calm yourself. Go within through prayer meditation. Study, read a spiritual reading that will help to uplift. And then be quiet. Be still. Feel after the presence of spirit. Feel after the touch of spirit on your life. It happens. It happens every day. Our role is to live in harmony with it. To recognize and to live in harmony. So we are blessed and blessed and blessed every day of our life. So according to the words of Jesus, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. Whoever has ears to hear, and eyes to see, let them hear, and let them see. And so it is. Namaste. Take a deep breath with me. And feel after that presence within yourself. It's a healing presence. And it's always there. Whatever the thought may be running through your mind about what's happening in your life, you have the power to shift that thought. The mind that created that thought is the same thing, the same mind that can reverse that thought. And holding that new thought, that reversed thought, over time, reverses the activity of the situation in our lives. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. 
It is powerful, my friends, to know that. It is even more powerful to live it. Blessings be unto you.